Yes, from this time, so on behalf of everybody, we want to thank you, and I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So my name is Rabbi Burr, for those who know, I, I recognize most of the people here. My name is Rabbi Burr, I'm from the Colwell here. For anybody who doesn't mm -hmm. uh, know who I am. Uh, again, thank you very much for inviting me to speak. It's a tremendous privilege to be here. It's a tremendous host to get together every week and discuss and we and we talk then. It's a tremendous host. And in this host, we talk to be Zoyta as the Mashiach should come and that we should have to be able to be Zoyta to see on the world of the Shechina, which is never had to write the we just had now that St. Aaron came back from Eretz Israel. He's bringing a little bit of the, of the, of the spirit of Eretz Israel here with him at the table. So we should all be zayt that once again be privileged to go back to Eretz Israel and have the Emsa Hashwas Hashkin, which should have this, the, the, the divine presence of all your hearts. Um, so I, I wasn't the first speaker here, so I don't know where the previous speakers, uh, exactly the points they touched on. I hope I don't repeat the things that were previously said. We can always use a review. Tachen and Amunah are things that we can always review. But uh, I hope that I can add another perspective. When we discuss Amuna and Bitachen, when we discuss Amuna, what usually comes to mind is belief. That we believe. We know the Rambam has 13 principles, 13 articles of faith that every Jew is required to believe in. Different things that we have to believe in. That Torah comes from heaven. We have to believe in God, of course. A, various, a list of things that we have to believe. So Amuna sometimes means to us uh, the, the dogmatic belief, the things we have to believe in on an intellectual level. And of course that's true, that Emuna requires us to believe in certain principles. And nowadays, unfortunately, we've been in exile now for thousands of years, and we do need uh, proofs and seminars that discuss Emuna, Emuna, that discuss the concepts and demonstrate the concepts and try to prove on some level these concepts. All of this is true. <coughs> I was thinking that what is the Torah, how does the Torah itself describe Emuna? So it's very interesting, I've been, I've been looking around and I've been paying attention to the different parshiyos in the Torah where the concept of Emuna comes up. And we find that Emuna is not just proving to a non-believer that God exists. It goes without saying, we take it for granted that God exists. And we're believers, we're maminim, the name maminim. We are believers in Hashem, and we're the children of believers in Hashem. We're part of the Jewish people who have always believed in Hashem. And for us, the issue is not that we believe in Hashem. Of course we believe in Hashem. Does Moshe Rabbeinu, does, does the great Moses have to work on Amunah? Did he have ever ideas of Amunah? Did Abraham Avinu, the first of the others, the patriarchs, did he have, did he have issues of Amunah? So I've, I've been paying attention to the Parshios, and it's very interesting what it says. So we just had recently in Parshios Lechlava <coughs> that Avram Avinu says to Hashem, I wrote, took him down, but Yoimur Avram, Hashem Elohim. So Avram Avinu is having a dialogue with Hashem himself, Kaviyoko. Avram Avinu turns to Hashem and says, Hashem, that what could you possibly give to me? You're promising me all of this reward, and you're promising me a great future. What could I possibly have from all of this if I don't have children? I don't have children. So what could all of it mean? What, what's it worth? You're going to give me great gifts. I'm not going to have anybody to bequeath it to. All I have is a servant, Eliezer, who is not even my, my biological child. So what am I going to gain from all of the things that you're promising me? You didn't give me any children. <clears throat> so Hashem spoke to Avram. He made a love language. The word of Hashem is to Avram. Lo rosh chazet. So Hashem promises Avram that this servant of yours, Eliezer, he's not going to be your heir. He im asher yetsi mine echa hu yirashem. You will actually have a biological son. So Avram Avinu was already in his nineties. You're going to have a biological son. So Hashem, we know the story. Hashem took Avram outside and he showed him the stars. Look up to the heavens and count the stars. Are you able to count the stars? So of course, Abraham says, I can't count the stars. The stars are numerous, millions, billions of stars. Nobody can count the stars. So Hashem says, so too will be your descendant. So Hashem is promising Abram that although biologically you don't have any children, and right now you don't have any descendants, but you will have descendants, and from you will stem the Jewish nation, and they'll be as numerous as the stars. So the Pasuk says an amazing thing, that Ham in Bashem, the Pasuk says, that Avram believed in Hashem, he trusted in what Hashem said, by and it counted for him as an act of righteousness. Hashem counted this belief as an act of righteousness. So 
we see from here, we see from this little story, that Emuna is not about do I believe in Hashem or do I not believe in Hashem? Over here, Avram is speaking to Hashem one on one, Kaviyoko. He's having a dialogue with Hashem. There's no issue here about whether I believe in Hashem or not. And if you would have asked Avram before, right, is there such a thing as Hashem? Of course, Avram would say there's such a thing as Hashem. I speak to Hashem every day. That's not an issue. And is Hashem all capable? Is he all powerful? Of course, Avram would say he's all powerful. I already came to the recognition when I was a little child that, uh, that Hashem created the entire world. Just look around you and you'll see how Hashem can create create such a beautiful world, Hashem could do anything, of course, that was a non-issue. So what does it mean, the hem in the Hashem, that now all of a sudden, Avram believed in Hashem, and by Yachshabel, by Tzedakah, and Hashem counted that as an act of righteousness. So Chazal tell us that Avram was biologically, physically, he was incapable of having children. If you would have asked the doctor, if you would have asked the fertility specialist, he would have said that Avram Avinu is incapable of having children, especially with Sarah. There's no way, after being married for so many years, that now they can expect to have a child. Hashem takes Avram and says, look at the stars, and, I, and Chazal tell us that Hashem took Avram and put him deep above the stars. He took him out of the physical realm. He took him out from under the laws of nature. And Hashem said to Avram that the Jewish people are beyond the laws of nature. We're not subject to the laws of nature. It's true that if you look at the stars, and you'd be able to be a stargazer. If you'd be an astinigus, if you'd be a stargazer, a fortune teller, then your fortune would be, your horoscope would be, that it's impossible to have any children. But Hashem is taking Avram out from under that, and you will be able to have children. And by Yachshadel, when Avram believed in Hashem, Hashem counted that as an act of righteousness. The, ch the Chazal, the Sfarim say an amazing thing, that even Hashem himself, Kaviyahu, was so impressed that Avram could believe this statement that Hashem is making. Hashem is all-powerful, and everybody knows that Hashem is all-powerful. But even Hashem, so to speak, was impressed with Avram that you can believe me on this. By the fact that Avram trusted in Hashem, Hashem counted that itself, that belief itself, as an act of righteousness. So what does it mean that Avram believed in Hashem on this point? So Emunah of Avram was not simply that I believe in Hashem, of course, that one without said, he was discussing, he was talking to Hashem. What the Pasuk is teaching us is that Amunah, the concept of faith in Hashem, is much deeper than just an, an abstract intellectual concept. The idea of Amunah in Hashem is that you rely on Hashem, that you live with Hashem, and that we have a relationship with Hashem. If it's physically impossible for me to have children, and Hashem tells me that it is possible and that we're going to have a child, if I'm able to rely on Hashem and feel at ease, and feel comfortable knowing now that I'm going to have Hashem, because I'm going to have a child because Hashem said so, that's Amuna. Amuna is much more than just simply believing in Hashem, but it's being relaxed and calm and realizing that Hashem is with us and that we're constantly living with Hashem. And everything Hashem says could happen, and I rely and I trust in Hashem deep in my heart. And that's the concept of Amuna when it comes to Avram Avinu. <clears throat> and Hashem himself, that Avram could be so relaxed about it and so at ease, that now he knows he's going to have a child. It's just a question of when. Uh, Hashem himself, so to speak, was amazed with that. So that's that's the concept. That's how the Torah introduces the concept of Amunah to us through the Amis. Even Abraham Avinu had a madrega, had a level where he came to a higher level of Amunah, a higher level of being relaxed and being trusting and secure in what Hashem tells him. <clears throat> we also find on the contrary, we find that sometimes the great the great personalities of the Torah, the Pasik, the Torah, the Torah accuses them of having a lack of amun. Right? We know the great Moshe Rabbeinu, who was the Nemon Desai, he was the one who was like a Ben Bias. He was like a member of Hashem's household, so to speak. He can just go in and talk to Hashem whenever he wanted to. He was the Chol Desai Nemon, who the Pasik says that Moshe Rabbeinu is just a trusted hand in the house. It's as if Hashem has a palace and Moshe Rabbeinu is a Ben Bias. He can just go in and walk around whenever he wants. He can speak to Hashem whenever he wants. If Moshe Rabbeinu has a question, he can simply turn to Hashem and ask Hashem the question. But we find that even Moshe Rabbeinu is accused of having a lack of emunah, of having a lack of trust in Hashem. The Pasuk says that Hashem commanded <coughs> Moshe Rabbeinu, the famous story of Meim Riva, Hashem commanded Moshe Rabbeinu to speak to the rock. So the, the, the story tells us that the Jewish people were traveling in the desert, and this is already the 40th year of being in the desert. They didn't have any natural, <coughs> natural bread or water. The bread was falling miraculously from the sky, the mud, and the water was coming from a traveling well. 
for the Eirishel Miriam, in the merit of Miriam, they had a traveling well that was supplying them with water. So after Miriam passed away, since the water came in the merit of Miriam, so when Miriam passed away, the water disappeared. This magical well disappeared. So now the Jewish people are complaining that we want water. They're complaining again, even after all the 40 years in the desert of seeing all these miracles. The minute the water supply runs out, so we complain again, we want water. <coughs> so Hashem tells, Hashem instructs Moshe Rabbeinu to go and to speak to a specific rock and ask the rock to let forth its water. And again, the miracle will continue at the rock. The water flows miraculously from a given rock. That would be the Be'er Shem Miriam. That was the original well of Miriam. It will be reinstated now through the merit of Moshe Rabbeinu speaking to the rock. <coughs> and the Jewish people are there complaining for the water. And Moshe Rabbeinu goes and he hits the rock. The Yitzra, the famous story in the Prophet So Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, Yan lehemantem bi lahati sheni leenei b'nei Yisrael. So says Moshe Hashem to Moshe Rabbeinu, because you did not believe in me, you did not trust in me, in order to sanctify me to the rest of the Jewish people. So therefore, lechem leitzaviu es kahol hazeh el haaretz Hashem asanti lohem. Therefore, says Hashem, you will not be the one to merit to bring the Jewish people over the Jordan into the land of Israel. Because you didn't believe in me, because I asked you to speak to the rock. And instead, you hit the rock, so you didn't trust in me, you didn't believe in me. So therefore, because of that, you lost your merit, and you're no longer going to be the leader. Yeshua will take over and bring the Jewish people in to Eretz Yisrael. The great Moshe Rabbeinu, who is conversing with Hashem, and whenever he had a question, he can simply turn to Hashem, and he can just ask Hashem the question. He's in a perpetual state of prophecy, of being able to ask Hashem for any question that he wants. There's no question here that Moshe Rabbeinu understands anything that's humanly possible to understand about Hashem. There's no question in a muna, in the normal sense of the word, the way we understand. What does Hashem mean when he says that he didn't trust me, you didn't believe in me, to speak to the rock? And what's the big deal about speaking to the rock or hitting the rock? <clears throat> so the Mepharshim tell us that speaking to the rock symbolizes the midah of rachim. Speaking to the rock symbolizes that you can speak to the rock gently, and you can ask the rock to give forth its water, and miraculously, God will cause this rock to give forth the water. Speaking to the rock symbolizes the mida of rachamim, the, the, the attribute of God's mercy. Hitting the rock is like the attribute of Hashem's strict justice, like punishment. Hitting the rock. You have to hit the person in order to get the person to do what you want, so to speak. So Moshe Rabbeinu hit the rock. So the, the, the commentaries tell us that when Moshe Rabbeinu hit the rock, instead of speaking to the rock, that's because Moshe Rabbeinu had a slight, on his level, something beyond our comprehension, Moshe Rabbeinu had a slight lack of amuna in Hashem that after the Jewish people have been witnessing these miracles for 40 years, and Hashem is constantly providing us with the mud, with the bread from heaven, with the water, with all the miracles taking care of us, with the glory, the clouds of glory that surround us and that envelop us and keep us safe in the desert. So how could the Jewish people be complaining that there's a, Hashem doesn't provide us with the water? Didn't we learn our lesson that Hashem provides us with whatever we need? And Moshe Rabbeinu got a little bit upset at us because how could we be constantly complaining year after year after everything that Hashem did for us? So Moshe Rabbeinu had a lack of emuna that it's impossible that Hashem should demonstrate Amida of Rachamim. It's impossible that Hashem would still demonstrate mercy under these circumstances because the Jewish people are complaining again and again. We didn't learn our lesson. How could it be that Hashem can still have mercy even under these circumstances? So Moshe Rabbeinu felt that the Hanhaga, Hashem's conduct, is going to have to be a conduct of strict justice. And he's only giving us the water because he has to, like we hit the rock. He's not, not, it wouldn't help to speak to the rock because he, Hashem gave up, so to speak, on speaking to us gently, on, work, on acting, on behaving towards us with the media of Rachman. So Hashem says, no, that I'm accusing you of having a lack of emuna, that you didn't believe in, in me, you're not trusting in me, that I only show mercy to the Jewish people under any circumstance. Even if we sin again and again, Hashem, everything that Hashem does is to give it to correct us and to help us and to prod us along gently with the Mida of Rachamim. So again, Emunah is not simply <clears throat> we believe in Hashem. Like Old Shabbat said, 
Moshe Rabbeinu is in the middle of discussing with the Kodesh Baruch the whole issue. He's called Beisi Nemahu. And Muna means living with Hashem and having a relationship with Hashem and trying to understand Hashem's ways as much as we can. And we feel Hashem's presence with us. And Moshe Rabbeinu, on his level, if he misunderstood the proper conduct, if he, if he misunderstood the, the, the greatness of how Hashem deals with us, on Moshe Rabbeinu's level, that's a lack of Muna, that's a flaw in believing in Hashem. <coughs> So the concept of Amuna is something that we live with Hashem, we have a relationship with Hashem, and we understand to the best of our ability Hashem's ways. He's like almost like a friend, Kaviyoko, almost like a friend, so to speak. <clears throat> I just want to bring one more example from the Chomish itself, where the Torah uses the expression Amuna, and what exactly is the Torah's perspective of what Amuna is, and what, what does the Torah expect of us to the extent that we're capable of achieving. The Pasuk says in the end of the Torah, in Parshat Hazinu, where Moshe Rabbeinu gives us a beautiful song, how the world itself, the heavens and the earth, are all going to testify, Parshat Hazinu, the world is going to testify to Hashem's greatness and to the truth of the Torah. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, Hatsur Tamim Pa'aloi, the Pasuk says that Hashem is like a rock. Hashem is like a reliable, we can rely on Hashem under all circumstances. He's like a rock, he's like an anchor. Hashem is a tzur. Come and follow him, and in all of his acts, everything that he does is perfect. He called drop of mishpat, because everything that Hashem does is just. Hashem never makes any mistakes. Everything Hashem does is just. Then the Pasuk says, Kel Emuna. Hashem is a Kel Emuna. Hashem is God, Kel Emuna. And he's someone we can have Emuna in. Something we can believe in. There ain't other, and there's no iniquity, there's no sin, there's no mistakes. Sadik the Yashavu, Hashem is righteous and Hashem is straightforward. So the Pasuk, the Torah itself, is describing Hashem as a Kel Emuna, as a God, Hashem is God, the true God, Emuna, who we can have Emuna in. So what is the Torah telling us? That Hashem is the Hashem that we can have Emuna in. <coughs> so again, the Mephorshim say that the Pasuk is ascribing this adjective to Hashem, that he's a Kel Amuna. What that means is that Hashem is there, and he's waiting for us to develop this relationship with him. He's a Kel Amuna. He's a Kel, he's a God that we can rely on. He's there for us. We can rely on him, and we can become close to him. We can develop a relationship with him, and Hashem Kaviyachal is waiting that we should develop this relationship. He's there with his hand outstretched. He wants us to come close. He wants us to approach him. And he's a Kelamuna. He's an approachable Hashem who we can rely on, we can feel secure with, and he's always there for us. He's a Kelamuna. He's somebody, so to speak, that we can rely on. Hashem is a Kelamuna. So the concept of Amuna in the Torah is, of course, we have to know the, the precepts. We have to know the articles of faith. But Amunah is much deeper than that. Amunah is that we can live with Hashem, we can have a relationship with Hashem, we can trust in Hashem, Hashem is there for us, and there's a relationship here. Hashem e Kaviyoko, so to speak, is like a friend. <clears throat> now, Kosh Baruch was looking forward to this. I saw a, a, a statement of Chazanish. He writes in a Sefer Amunah and Bitachem. He says an amazing thing there. He said like this. I wrote it down, I quoted it. The Midas Emuna, he says, the attribute of Emuna, he doesn't even call it an intellectual thing, it's a Mida, it's an attribute. The Chazanish there says a person could be modest, a person could be humble, a person could be a good hearted person, and a person also has Emuna, it's an attribute, it's a, a sensitivity that a person has. Midas Emuna, in a Tia Daka Miadinos Hanefesh. An amazing expression. He says that the concept of Amuna, the attribute of Amuna, of trusting in Hashem, of believing in Hashem, is in a piyadaka. It's a sublime sensitivity, miyadimus hanefesh, from a refined soul. The Chazanish has a very poetic way of writing, and he describes Amuna as a sensitivity. It's a subtle sensitivity, like a sublime sensitivity that stems from the refinement of the soul. It's something that comes from our neshama. The reason why the Jewish people can have a muna is because it's really a function of the neshama. It's something that we have the capacity for because we have a neshama, we have a soul, we have a Jewish soul, we have a divine soul. So, says the Chazan Ish, Im hu bal nefesh, if a person is someone who's in touch with his own nefesh, with his own neshama, he's in touch with his soul, 
the Shah Toy Shah's hashkit, and he has tranquility, he has 